أليس الله بأحكم الحاكمين قرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك لكرم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الحمد لله that Allah سبحانه وتعالى has given us the ability to come together on the day of Friday and to benefit something that will help us understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that will increase our knowledge and our religion. And us coming to this halaqah, Admun'am means two things. It means that Allah, He loves us. Abdullah, this means Allah, He what? He loves you. Abdullah. Abdullah Jr. It means that Allah, He loves you. Why? Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهِ بِهِ خَيْرٍ يُفَقِّهُ if Allah he wants good for somebody, he will give him an understanding of the religion. Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you and make it easy for you to come to this type of gathering. Also, this shows that we also love Allah. Because we took time out of our day to be able to what? To come here and sit here. And also, us coming here, we would not have been able to come if it wasn't from the tawfiq of Allah. If Allah did not give us the tawfiq, the ability. And tawfiq is very important. That's why a lot of time when people, you know, they give Muhammad, when people see each other and they give salam to each other, you know what they say? Bi tawfiq. May Allah give you tawfiq. Meaning may Allah give you the ability to always to continue doing good deeds. When we hear the adhan, and, and the Muaddin, he says, Hayya ala salah. What, what do we say? La hawla wa la quwwata. Hayya ala salah, meaning come to what? Come to pray. And we say what? La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There is no strength and no ability except from Allah. Why? Meaning that if Allah did not give you the ability, you would not have come to? You would not have come to salah. So coming here, alhamdulillah ta'ala, Allah has given us the, the tawfiq. And today, gathering, we will talk about knowledge and some, of, and some of its virtues and the status of knowledge. Now, what is knowledge? Always when you want to talk about something, you should first know the meaning of what you're talking about. So, Muhammad, what is knowledge to you? Huh? What? Information. Some of the scholars, when they explain knowledge, they say knowledge is from the things that is what? Awdah min an yu'raf. That it does not need to be defined. It's already known. Like for example, how would you define love? How would you define good manners? This is something that's already known by everybody. So some of the scholars, they say this is, this is awdah min an yu'raf. It's, it doesn't, it's very clear. It does not need to be defined. And some other scholars, they say that لا تحتاج إليه التفصيل You don't need to explain it. And if you try to explain it, لا يزداده إلا إشكالا The only thing is going to bring more complication. If you try to explain this, it's going to just bring more complication. But a beautiful definition that Shaykh Muhammad Salah Uthameen, he mentioned in a lot of his books of knowledge, is knowledge is هو إدراك الشيء على ما هو عليه إدراك جازما That knowledge of the Rasakh is that you comprehend a matter. Knowledge is that you understand a matter. And you just don't understand it, but you understand it the way it should be understood. Because Muhammad, sometimes somebody will say, I understand. But when you ask him, 
What did you understand? He will say the what? The opposite. Is this knowledge? Is this knowledge of the haq? Somebody will say, I understand something. You ask him, tell me, what did you understand from it? And he says something completely off track. Is this knowledge? No. So knowledge is that you understand a matter, but you also understand the way the, the way it should be understood. You understand the way it is? Idraq and jaziman. With a strong, firm knowledge. With a strong, firm way that you understand this matter. So this is knowledge. Knowledge is what? That you understand a matter the way it should be understood in a strong, firm way. Now, in the Sharia, there's two types of knowledge. Inside the Sharia, you find two types of knowledge. You have a knowledge which is what? Al-Maqasid. Which is, this is the goal. This is where you want to go. And this is fiqh, hadith, and aqidah. The goal is for you to understand these sciences. So this is the maqasid. And you have another knowledge, which is what? Al-wasail. Which means that it is a, a, a ladder that will help you reach your goal. So you find that for you to understand Quran, you need to understand what? Tafsir, right? Or Usulu Tafsir, right? So Usulu Tafsir is a what? Is a wasail, it's a ladder for you to understand the Quran. For you to understand the Quran, you need Arabic. So Arabic, what, what type of knowledge is Arabic? Is a, a, a tool of knowledge that will help you understand where you want to reach. You want to learn fiqh? Who ever heard of a science called Usul al-fiqh? We heard this before, I'm talking Usul al-fiqh. So Usul al-fiqh is a knowledge, it's a wasail that will help you reach to understand, to understand fiqh. So the scholars, they say that when they talk about knowledge, they say there's the maqasid and then there's the wasail. And the wasail is what you need to start with to help you reach the maqasid. And knowledge is also divided into two. Muhammad, there's a beneficial knowledge and there's a non-beneficial knowledge. And we get this from the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet, you say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa'. Oh Allah, protect me or I seek refuge in, in uh, I seek refuge from knowledge that does not benefit. So from this we understand the opposite. That there is knowledge that benefit and there's knowledge that does not, that does not benefit. And in a famous book by Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali, he mentioned some of the signs of a beneficial knowledge and some of the, of some of the signs of non-beneficial knowledge. So he says some of the signs that in this knowledge that you're gaining is non-beneficial is that the only thing it does for you, Abdul Saq, is just increases you in pride and arrogance. You learn, you learn. And this knowledge that you learn, the only thing that it does, it makes you have this arrogance and this pride. I know and he doesn't know. Everyone should take from me. I am the most knowledgeable person. And he mentioned some of the signs of non-beneficial knowledge is that you are only seeking this knowledge to have some type of status in this world. The only... The only thing in your heart that you run after this knowledge is that you want to be able to lead the people in salah. That's your only concern. This he says this is a sign that this is non-beneficial. He and then he also mentions that one of the signs of non-beneficial knowledge is you want to gain so everyone head can turn towards you, so people can always come to you and. You like this attention. He said, if this is the only reason why you want to seek knowledge, know that the knowledge you're gaining is what? Is a sign that this is not beneficial because it's going to come back and it's going to haunt you later on. And we'll come back to the hadith. And the Prophet wasallam he said, Man talab al-ilma Allah, Whoever seeks knowledge for other than Allah, or he intends it for a purpose other than for the sake of Allah, 
فَلْيَتَبَوَّ مَقْعَدَهُ مِنَ النَّارِ Let him have his seat in the hellfire. His seat in the hellfire is already, is already ready. And he also mentions that some of the signs of non-beneficial knowledge is that you start to claim that you are a wali. You know what's a wali? A friend of what? A friend of Allah. That you say that I am, you say that I'm the most knowledgeable person, thus I am one of the wali of Allah, and everybody has to respect me. And everybody has to what? Respect me. That's Umar al Khattab, he used to say, whoever says, Man qala huwa alim, fa'arf annahu jahilu. Umar al Khattab, he said, if, if anyone says I am knowledgeable, know that he is what? Actually, ignorant. The moment that you say that, you start to say, I have knowledge, I am very knowledgeable, this is the point where you start to go down in your knowledge. Because knowledge, the more you seek it, what does it supposed to do? It humbles you. The more you seek it, you find out, the more you don't know. The more you learn, you find out the more, the more knowledge out there there are, and that the more you, you don't know. That's why, do you know who are the most humblest people? The scholars. Because they know how much they don't know. They know how much they, they don't know. And he also mentioned some of the signs of beneficial knowledge. He said some of the signs of beneficial knowledge is that, Muhammad, this knowledge will make you love Allah more. This knowledge that you gain, make you love Allah more. And the knowledge that you gain from the signs of beneficial knowledge is that you will feel, that you, it will bring the fear of Allah to you. Man kana billahi a'raf, kana bihi akhwaf. Whoever knows Allah the more, the most, will be the one who fears Allah the most. And who fears Allah the most? Who do we know is somebody that fears Allah the most? Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa because he knew Allah the most. And from the sign of beneficial knowledge, it makes you run away from praise and leadership. Somebody comes to you and say, wow, that was a beautiful khutbah. You say, that was nothing. This, I mean, you, you don't know how many mistakes I had in that khutbah. Somebody marked, that was a beautiful lecture. So many other things I could have mentioned, but I did not know. It always, you always what? When someone praises you, 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 you push it back. This shows that this is a sign of beneficial knowledge. And the scholars also mention, they divide knowledge into three. They say there is knowledge that is always praised. And this is the knowledge of Sharia. Ah. Knowledge of Sharia, ah, it is always what? Praised. And there is a knowledge that is blameworthy. This knowledge is not praised. And we should not seek it. What kind of knowledge is that? Abdur Sakh. What is a knowledge that we shouldn't seek after it? No, we need dunya. What's a science that we shouldn't run after? Science that we shouldn't run after is magic. Should we go learn magic? Hey, Shaykh, what did Allah say in the Quran? ma ala mulk Sulaiman. And then at the end he says, وَيَتَعَلَّمُونَ مَا يَضُرُّهُمْ وَلَا يَنْفَعُهُمْ Allah talks about those people that are wanting to go learn magic. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they are running after something that will not harm, that, that will not benefit them. Also, when it comes to some of the knowledge that we shouldn't run after it so much, for example, the six pillars of Iman, Abdul Karim, six pillars of Iman, quickly. What are the six pillars of Iman? And two, I mean? <laughs> hey? Huh? One, one of you guys. I need the six pillars of Iman. Hi Muhammad, six pillars of Iman. Believing in Allah. Believing in Allah. His, books. His books. His books. His angels. 
his messengers? The decree? That's the decree, right? Dear judgment. Abdullah, six pillars of Iman. Again, so you say it. Antum billahi. Umalaikati. Rusulihi. Rukutubihi. William Akhir. Al Qadi Khayyu Ashar. Abdur Sakh, six pillars of Iman. To be in Allah, His angels, His books, Day of Judgment, Prophet. One of the easiest way to remember this is if you do it in order. See, Muhammad, you were doing good in order and then you put decree fifth and then you got stuck in the last one, right? One of the way is if you do it in order, you'll always remember. First, you believe in Allah. So you say, I took min, billah. Who, what creation is the closest to Allah? The who? Angels. So you say, what does Allah give the angels? So you say, to, to believe in the books. And who, who do the books go to? So you say, to believe in the messengers. And what is inside the book? The day of judgment, right? That you will come back to Allah. And also the qadr. So if, you do, if you do things, when you want to memorize something, if you do it in order, it will always be what? It'll always be easy. These six pillars of Iman, the most one that is the most complicated and have a lot of people have questioned about, and even before, long time ago, people used to talk about it and disagree upon and have disputes on it, it's always the what? The sixth pillar. The Qadr, right? You go to any, any gathering, Tahir, brother, you go to any youth gathering, the first question they ask you is, if Allah is there, how come there's evil? Muhammad, you hear this question? If Allah is there, how come there's evil? They ask, um, if Allah knows who's going to go to Jannah, how far, why people are here? Allah, you hear these questions before? Muhammad, you heard this, these questions before? Yes, yeah, very popular questions. So the sixth pillar of the Qadr is a big section and covers a lot. But you know we will not fully understand it because it has something to do with the power of what? Of Allah. And will, will our brain ever be able to understand Allah? Ayat al-Kursi, who can you add al-Kursi? Abdul Hai brothers, one of the brothers, Ayatul Kursi. Allahu la ilaha. Hai Abdul Saq Ayatul Kursi. Look, wala yuhiyutuna bi shayin. That you will never be able to comprehend Allah except what He wants you to what? Understand. So, Qadr, the decree is from the power of Allah. So, so us, we will never be able to understand, but we know some of the benefit and some of the wisdom behind it. That's why Abdullah bin Abbas, he used to say about Qadr, he say, Al Qadr, Sirullah Ta'ala is the secret of Allah. And if you try to go deep and try to understand every issue in this Qadr, you would find yourself destroyed. Meaning you would just, you would find yourself misguiding yourself. Abdul Haq, you understand that? That if you dive into this, you would what, find yourself what? Misguiding yourself. Some of also some of the knowledge that is blameworthy that we should not seek after it is also like the names and the attributes of Allah. For example, Allah He says in the Quran, He has hands. Tabarak al-ladi bi 
الملك وقالت اليهود يد الله يد الله مغلولة الله سبحانه وتعالى says والسماوات مطويات بيميني verses that, that says Allah has a hand now Muhammad when it comes to this type of attributes of Allah as a Muslim you accept it and you say this is we say that Allah has a hand but should you say what type of hand should you say if Allah has a hand he also has fingers and he has a vein should you dive into this type of stuff no Abdul Haq, should you eat, should you change this meaning and say the hand of Allah means the power of Allah or you should keep it the way it is you keep it the way it is some of the early scholars some of the early scholars they used to what they used to study this and go after this and at the end of their lifetime look at the end of their lifetime this is what they said they used to say ثم يقولون they used to say وأنا اليوم لم أعرف شيئا بل أموت على عقيدة العجوزة من نيسابور they used to say that and after this many years that I used to run after this type of knowledge the attribute of Allah is it like this or is it like this what the, how I wish they used to run after this he said at the end I will die upon the death of the old lady from Nisabur meaning that I will die upon the the, the natural state of the of the fitra that you accept the way it is and you don't change it you don't add any anything to it and you don't twist it now the ruling of seeking knowledge the ruling of seeking knowledge is of two types it is a obligation upon every single person it is an obligation upon every single person and another type it is a communal obligation and as for the obligation for every type of person Muhammad when I say it's an obligation Fardu'ain what does this mean when I say it's an individual obligation what does this mean you have to do it and if you don't do it huh if you don't do it then you are deserving of what yes what is this knowledge that is of a individual obligation for everybody Adwan'am, can somebody pray for you huh so you have to learn how to pray so this is what type of knowledge a, a obligation knowledge for so you have to pray so when you have to pray you have to make wudu before you pray right so making wudu and tahar is what type of knowledge it's an obligation knowledge Abdullah for you to pray you have to read surah what Fatiha so for you to learn the surah is a what for you to read the surah is what wajib Ramadan comes and you're mature so now you have to also learn the ruling of what of what of fasting and then so knowledge ma wujiba alayka amalu wujiba alayka ta'allum this is the principle Abdul Saq this is the principle whatever becomes obligation upon you to do the knowledge of it also becomes what obligation for example Admunam, you're about to get married now now you have to go learn the what you have to go learn what the chapter of what of marriage what needs to be in the contract how I can approach what I have to do after Muhammad you start a business company now you have to go learn what the chapter of what 
transaction, right? The, the chapter of what? Of business. You have to know how to do the business. You have to know what Islam says, how to deal with your employees, and things like that. And then there is a fard that is fard kifaya. A obligation, but is a what? Communal what? Obligation. Communal obligation, Abdul Haq means that what? If somebody does it, the others, they don't have to do it. For example, Brother Mahad, Mahad, right? Brother Mahad, you are the only one here now that knows about the signs of inheritance. You know inheritance? When somebody dies, and you, you're the only one that knows the signs. So, somebody passes away, we go to who? Brother Mahad, Brother Mahad, this is his money, this is his family members, please divide it. The, other, the rest of us, do we have to learn the signs? Because if one person knows it, it is what? Enough. Brother Muhammad knows about the signs of when somebody passes away, the janaza. So somebody passes away, who do we go to? Brother Muhammad, what should we do? How should we wash his body? Uh, how many days can we keep him? How should we bury him? Muhammad knows this knowledge. So if he knows it, it does it become obligation for us to know it? What if Muhammad leaves us and it's only us now? Now what happens? Now one of us have to what? One of us have to learn the science. So these are the two types of, of knowledge. From the virtues of knowledge. Is that Muhammad, when Allah he created you, he gave you tools. And he gave you everything you need to seek knowledge. So that you can seek knowledge. Allah says, Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'lamuna shay'a. Allah says, and Allah has taken you out from the womb of your what? Mothers, not knowing anything. Waja'ala lakum, and he had made for you a sam'a wal basara wal fu'ad. Allah, he brought you to this world and he gave you what? Sight, and he give you hearing, and he give you a, a brain. Why? So that you may be thankful. And how can you be thankful? That you get to know Allah so you can show him the best way to be thankful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he brought you to this world and give you, this is the tools for you to learn about me. Use it so that you can learn, learn about me. From the virtues of knowledge in Islam, and I'm sure everybody knows this, is what is the first revelation in the Quran? Iqra. What does Iqra mean? Read. Iqra is a tool of seeking knowledge, right? And did Allah only mention it once? Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq al-insana Iqra wa rabbuka akram the first time the Quran came down, read was mentioned twice. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, Iqra, Iqra, what? Iqra, what? Bismi rabbika alladhi. Read in the name of Allah. Meaning read about Allah. Learn about Allah. And then he mentions something very beautiful. Iqra wa rabbukal akram. Read and your Lord is the most generous. Read and your Lord is the most what? The most generous. What does read and generous have to do with each other? Imam al Qurtu, what, what is that, Sah? Okay, he gives the tools. Out. Allah says, Read and your Lord is the most generous. Imam al Qurtu, he says that from the, you know, provision that comes from Allah. Like how long you're going to live is part of your what? Provision, right? Abdu'l-Nam? Your rizq. How many money you're going to make? How many kids you're going to have? And one of, the, one of your provision is how many knowledge you're going to have. Is how many knowledge you're going to what? You're going to have. So rizq, provision, 
is not only wealth, but it's also what the amount of knowledge that you will be that you will be given. Also, Imam Al-Qurtubi he says, one of the best way to seek provision is to have knowledge. That's why Allah says, Iqra and your Lord is the most what? Generous. If you want to seek, if you want to seek provision, the best way is you seek it with what? Knowledge. Why? If you do this, you know how to seek it the halal way, and you'd be put in position where you would multiply a lot of provision at once. What does this mean? This means that you will be given, for example, you'll be given a teaching position. So every two weeks you will get what? Money, right? For teaching. And every day you teach and you're teaching somebody. Isn't this also a good deed that you will see on Day of Judgment? So he's saying read, knowledge. And my brother never helps me out in the working wise. He always leaves in the morning, goes after you, and he learns from you, and he comes back late at night, and I am the one who have to go out and work and take care of all the other bills. The Prophet ﷺ, he says, لَعَلَّكَ Perhaps you are getting this provision because of him. Because of him leaving and seeking knowledge, and you're looking after him, Allah is doing what for you? Giving you opportunities after opportunities to, 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 to work. Iqra wa rabbukal wa rabbukal akram. Read and your Lord is the most generous. From the virtues of knowledge, is that, can we speak without knowledge? We cannot speak without what? Without knowledge. And, and Allah told us to call people to what? Islam, right? Right, Abdul Haq? Udu ila sabili rabbika, right? Call people to the way of Allah. But you cannot call people to the way of Allah without what? Muhammad? Without knowledge, right? Allah says, وَلَا تَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمِ إِنَّ السَّمْعَ وَالْبَصَرَ وَالْفُؤَادِ كُلُّ أُولَائِكَ كَانَ عَنْهُ مَسْؤُولًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and follow not that of which you have no knowledge. Meaning do not speak about what you have no knowledge about. But at the same time, Allah tells us to give da'wah to people. So Muhammad, if you want to give da'wah, what do you have to do? We have to seek knowledge. And Adman, you do want to speak and inform people about Islam, right? Right, Abdul Haq? And you want to tell them that Maybe what you guys heard, or what you guys see, or what you guys read, it's not true. And you want to be able to defend it, right? What do you need to defend Islam? Knowledge. knowledge. From the virtues of knowledge, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has raised the status of the people of knowledge. Allah has raised the status of the people of knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He raises the rank of the believers. If you're a believer, Allah will raise your rank. And Allah will raise even the rank higher for those that have knowledge. Al-Mujahid in his tafsir, he mentions this, Abdullah. Listen to this beautiful tafsir of this ayah. What's, what ayah is this surah in? يَرْفِقِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمُ عَبْدُ الرَّحْمَانِ What ayah is this surah in? Muhammad Abdullah. Right? Allah says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise the rank of the believers. Imam Mujahid he said that when all when Allah created everybody, they were all on the same level. Is the believer the same as the non-believers? كَلْ مجرمين. No, right? 
So Allah, He took the, the those the, the those the believers. Allah, He took them to a higher level. Now you have second level of the believers. Yarfa'illahu ladina amanu minkum. And now, those that have knowledge, and those that don't have knowledge, are they the same? Qul hal yastawi ladina ya'lamun, wal ladina la ya'lamun. Are they the same? So then Allah, He took the people of knowledge to a higher level. So Allah says, Allah will raise the rank of the believers and those that have knowledge in levels. This is where, Muhammad, this is in the hereafter, right? But also in this dunya too, Allah will raise their status. In this dunya, Allah will raise the, the status of the people of what? Of not. Don't you find that when the shaykh, he comes, what do people do? They, Salam alaikum shaykh, how are you doing? They give the shaykh his hand, right? Sometimes they even get in line to shake his what? To shake his hand. When he walks, everybody what? Gives him salam. Hey, how are you doing? People say, Chef, please come to my house. I want to give you dinner, lunch. You go out to eat with the chef. Oh, Chef, don't pay. I'm going to pay. Don't you guys see this? Why are people giving the people of knowledge this status? Because of their what? Because of their knowledge. Because of their? Because of their knowledge, people will respect them even in this dunya. Also, not only will Allah raise their status, but also their, their speech will be very powerful. Their words will be very, very powerful. For example, Muhammad, you might come to me and say, Ahmed, I'm having a hard time. Work is tough. What should I do? I will say to you, just be patient. Life is a test. And you say, oh, okay. Like, it did not hit your heart. Nothing. Now you go to Brother Taha. Brother Taha is very knowledgeable. He's, he has knowledge. So now Brother Muhammad, he goes to Brother Taha. And he says, Brother Taha, Sheikh Taha, I'm having a hard time. Work is tough. Sh Sheikh Taha will say the same thing I said. Be patient. This life is a what? But when Muhammad hears it from him, he's going to say, Wallahi, you're right. This is nothing I should be. What was the difference? Abdul Haq. I said the same thing as the Sheikh said, but why did Muhammad take it from me and not me? Because from the, from the way of the people of knowledge, that even the word is what? Is blessed. You understand that? What should I do? What should, I, should I do this? No, he don't do this for Allah. Okay, whatever. He still does it. Another person of knowledge tells him, then he will what? He will stop. From the way of Allah, he raised the people of knowledge, is he makes their statement even what? Very, very strong. From the virtues of knowledge, is that it will give you the fear of what? Allah. It will give you the fear of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهِ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهِ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاء That the people that will have the true fear is the people of what? Of knowledge. Muhammad, if me and you are walking, me and you are what? We're walking together. And we see a tiger. So we turn around and we start running. And all of a sudden we see Abdullah Jr. So he sees us running, so he runs with us. Who's going to run fastest? And who's going to run while their heart is beating faster? You understand this? Me and you, we walk in, we saw a lion. So we started running. And in a corner, we see Abdullah, he was just standing. He sees us running, so he just runs with us. Whose heart is going to beat faster? Huh? Because we saw the lion, we saw his teeth, we saw everything, right? We have knowledge of what we... But then Muhammad, all he saw is us, what? Right. Just like that. The more knowledge you have, the more you'll know what? Allah. And then the, the more you're gonna fear Allah. Man kana billahi a'raf kana bihi 
the one who knows Allah the most will be the one who will fear Allah the most. And Muhammad, why is it important to fear Allah? What is the benefit of fearing Allah? One benefit of having the fear of Allah. You know, the people of Jannah, they're going to talk to each other. They're going to say to each other, Abdul so what did you go through in this world? What did you go through? وَأَقْبَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ يَتَسَاءَلُونَ they will say to they they will they they will talk to each other. Yeah, what did you do in this world? How did you overcome your desires and these doubts? How did you get to Jannah? And they will say, They say, when we were in the dunya with our family, we used to be afraid of Allah. We used to fear Allah's punishment. We used to fear the punishment in the grave. So because of this, we did not do any disobedience to Allah. And if we did, we would repent back to Allah. So they used to fear Allah. Look, inna kunna min qablu fi ahlina mushfiqeen. Because of this fear, فَمَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْنَا وَوَقَانَا عَذَابًا So because of the fear of Allah, Allah, He saved us on this day. إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ Look, look. We fear our Lord. They say we, we feed the people not wanting anything from them. And we do the righteous deed because we fear Allah. And we fear the day of judgment. Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. They used to fear Allah. Allah in the next ayah says what? فَوَقَاهُمُ اللَّهُ شَرَّ ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمِ Allah will keep them safe on that day from what they used to be afraid about. فَوَقَاهُمُ اللَّهُ شَرَّ ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمِ وَلَقَاهُمْ نَظْرَةً وَسُرُورًا And Allah will give them happiness and a bright face. And how do you see this? From the benefit of having Allah you will be in what? In paradise. Not only that, you will have two gardens. Wali man khafa maqama rabbihi jannatan. And the one who has the fear of Allah, he will have two gardens. Okay, I need an ayah I'm looking for in the, in the end of Surah Al-Nazi'at. I need somebody to help me. Who can read an ayah for us that will take us to the end of Surah Al-Nazi'at? Shaykh Umar Wal-Naz'ati Gharqa Wal-Naz'ati Gharqa I need an ayah This ayah is located in the end So I need somebody to help me This is the ayah I was looking for Subhanallah Say it again Wa-amma man khafa Maqama rabbihi Someone finish Wa-amma man khafa Maqama rabbihi Read the ayah Shaykh Umar وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى And the one who has the fear of Allah and he fights his desires, his promise is what? Is Jannah. And if you want to have true fear of Allah, Muhammad, what do you need? If you want to have true fear of Allah, what do you need? You need to have knowledge. from the benefit of knowledge is that it is the only thing look Allah he commanded the Prophet to ask for more of something Abdullah Allah he commanded the Prophet to ask for more of what of something and nowhere else in the Quran did Allah commanded the Prophet to ask for more of something except for this and what is it? Ask for more what? وَقُرْ رَبِّ زِدْنِي And oh, say Muhammad, oh, oh Allah increase me in knowledge. Why? Why Muhammad, why not, why not ask for more life? Because if you have more life, you could give more da'wah to people, right? Why not ask for more miracles? Abdullah, if you have more miracles, 
you could show the people miracles and they will believe you, right? Why not ask for more followers? Yeah, that's good. More people follow you, other people copy them, right? Because with knowledge, you could do all of that. Right, Mahad? With knowledge, you could do all of what? With knowledge, somebody comes to you with doubts and says, you destroy his doubt with knowledge. This is like the miracle. A lot of people come, you speak with them in knowledge in a way that will touch their heart, they will follow you. So with knowledge, you combine all of this khair. From the benefit of knowledge, is that if you speak without it, you will put yourself in danger and you will put others in danger. From the benefit of knowledge, is that if you speak without it, you would put yourself in what? In danger. We all know the hadith of the man who killed 99 people, right? Abdullah Jun, you know this? Hey, summarize for us quickly. You know, summarize it for us, the man who killed 99. Sent very good, Abdullah. A man killed 99 people. Muhammad, can you imagine 99 people? A lot of number, right? And he killed them at a time where was there a gun at this time? There was no gun. So how do you think he killed them? Very close. Either what he used his what? His hand, or he used a knife to stab them. And this is, by the way, this scene is very. This scene is very heavy on your mind, right? Do you know how, you know a lot of people, when they kill somebody and they get away, you know what happened to them? When they sleep, they have a what? A nightmare of that person. When they sleep, they see that person coming to them. When they're walking in the street, they would hear that person's voice. When they're talking to somebody, that person's face will come to them. So they, they would go what? Crazy, and then they would just turn themselves in and say, I killed somebody. Just put me inside. Because it's very hard on a, on a person's mind. So imagine 99 people. 99 where maybe he saw, used his hand and he saw the last breath. Or he stabbed and he saw just the blood coming down from that person. Something hit his heart and he said, I want to repent. I want to go back to Allah. So he asked the people the right question. He said, point to me the most knowledgeable person. But the people pointed to a worshiper. A what? Abdullah, you said a shaykh, but it's a what? What's a worshiper? A worshiper is somebody, when you come to the message, he's always what? He's always there. First rak'ah. He always reading Quran. In the daytime, when you try to give him food, he says, no. And you know that he's fasting. At nighttime, at fajr time, his eyes has the bag because he was up all night praying. He, did, he does a lot of worship. But he did not have a lot of what? A lot of knowledge. And a worshiper, they don't, you know, especially back then, they would leave. If they see like a bad environment, they would isolate themselves. They would not even go outside. They would keep to themselves. So the man, he comes to him, Muhammad, and he said, somebody told me to come to you. I killed 99 people. What should I do? The man said, 99 people? He cannot even imagine one person. He said, she killed me. He said, get it. There's no trouble for you. Get away. Did he speak with knowledge? So he spoke with no what? What did this, what, what, what happened to him? The man, he what? He killed him. So when you speak with no knowledge, you bring danger to your what? You bring danger to yourself. Also, when you speak with no knowledge, you bring danger to other people. Then some of the Prophet wasallam. a companion, he was wounded in his head. He had a big wound, 
on his head. And the night was cold and they slept outside. And as he slept outside, at night time when he woke up, he found himself in a state where he had to take a shower. He had to take a what? He found himself in a state where he had to take a shower. So he asked the companions, he said, I'm in this state, I'm wounded, it's cold, I don't want to take a shower, I just want to just make wudu, or to Yemen, what should I do? They said, no, 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 you have to take a shower. There's no other way around it, you must. And what did he do? He took a shower. And the cold water and the weather went inside the wound on his head. And surely after he what? He died. And the news reached the Prophet. And the Prophet said, they killed them. Meaning that they gave the wrong what? This wrong answer led him to his what? His death. Why did not they ask if they don't know? Why did they not what? Ask if they did, if they did not? No. Because asking is the cure of ignorance. So from this Muhammad, when you talk with no knowledge, you can hurt yourself and you can also hurt what? You can also hurt, hurt others as well. From the benefit of, of seeking knowledge, it is that, like we mentioned, a sign that Allah wants good for you. Abdul Haq, Abdul Saq. If you find yourself always reading a book, on YouTube watching a lecture, in the car listening to something, looking for uh, that, are we, is there halqa? looking for halqas, looking for soak of knowledge, this is a sign that Allah wants what? Good. Man yuri dila bi qarin yufiqu fi din and if you find yourself, Muhammad, always, what's the, what's the new game? Fright night or something? Fortnite. Fortnite. Always talking about what? Fortnite. And doing this. And looking at the, 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 the newest iPhone. And you know, some people, they know like, even like, you know, the, the chip inside the iPhone. You ask them, what's the difference between iPhone X and iPhone X? They say because of 3.2. They know very specific detail. But how do you make wudu? That one's tough. This one first, or which one? But they know the other, uh, uh, Telsa, you know the cartel? They will tell you who made it, how it started, what type of, there's no engine, right? There's no engine in the Telsa. Electric car. It's an electric car. They, uh, they will tell you every detail. But you say, make Adhan. Wallah, Adhan, I don't know how to make Adhan. Abdullah, this is tough, right? Abdullah, this is a good sign? Is it a good sign? Huh? No, right? Yeah, no, it's not a good sign. That if you find yourself, you know everything about everything except your religion, this is a what? Very powerful ayah. They know everything about the dunya, but on the hereafter, they are, they are heedless. From the signs that shows how important knowledge is, is that you cannot hide it. Abdul Haq, if you have knowledge, you cannot hide it. Abdullah, if you have somebody ask you a question and you know the answer, and you know that this person cannot go to somebody else, you'll be in big trouble. If you know, if you have knowledge, somebody comes to you, Muhammad says, can you teach me how to make wudu? And you say, no, I don't have time for you. And you know, he may not find another person to help him, you'll be in big trouble. Because what did you just do now? You kept what? Knowledge. Allah is doomed. And look, Allah, he puts a huge punishment next to this. So that nobody should hide knowledge. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَكْتُمُونَ مَا أَنزَلْنَا مِنَ الْبَيِّنَاتِ وَالْهُدَى مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا بَيَّنَّاهُ لِلنَّاسِ فِي الْكِتَابِ أُولَٰئِكَ يَلْعَنُهُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَلْعَنُهُمُ اللَّهِ Allah says, those who conceal and hide the knowledge of Allah, 
when they're supposed to make it clear, Allah will curse them. And if you read the Quran, Mahad in the Quran, is there a lot of curses from Allah? Not a lot, right? Ala la'natullahi alal kathibin. Ala la'natullahi alal zalimin. Not a lot of curses. To show that means that when Allah he uses this, it's something big. And Allah is using the curse for those that hide knowledge. From the virtues of knowledge is that when we die, the Prophet Sallallahu he said, إِذَا مَاتَ الْإِنسَانُ When the man can, he dies. إِنْ قَطَعَ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثَ Muhammad, when you, and, when, when you and I die, can we pray anymore? Can we cry? So our action, our good deed, what? Stops. Except for three. Who can tell me these three? And then we're going to stop here. Knowledge. knowledge. Righteous knowledge, what else? Sadaqatun Jariyah, okay, a continuous charity, and? And waladun salah, and a righteous uh, son or daughter you leave and that makes the offer. So these are the three. Muhammad, what are the three? Knowledge. Waladun salah. And? And Sadaqat Jariyah. Let's look at them one by one and see which one is the best. Let's do the waladun salih and yadu'ala. A righteous son or daughter that makes du'a for you. You know, the Prophet says someone is in the grave and all of a sudden his, his, his grave would be wide. And he would see his rank in general go high. And he would ask why? They say because your, your son or your daughter is making what? Du'a for you. Your son, your daughter, you teach them Islam, they make du'a for you. But they will die, right? And they will have kids, right? Do kids make du'a for their grandparents? Huh? Huh? Not very much, right? Okay. Say grandparents are good, they make du'a for the... The grandkids make du'a for their... What about the next generation? Would they make du'a for? The chance will be now what? Very... Very small, right? Hatta sometimes some of the students, I say, what's your name? He say, my name is Muhammad. What's after you? He'll mention, what's after? He say, he doesn't know. So he knows his name and he knows his what? Hey, Abdullah, what's your, Abdullah, what's your name? Hayy. Usman. Hayy. Hayy. Four. Admanam. Hayy. Okay. Okay. Three. Muhammad Usman. Muhammad Abdul Kareem. Hi, Muhammad. That's four. Hi, Abdul Rahman, Ahmed, Asi, Saleh, Abdullah. Okay, five is the highest so far. Okay, but the point is huge. After what? We'll so this will stop. Maha, this will what? Eventually what? It will stop. Sadaqatun Jariyah. You come to the masjid, brothers, we need to build this masjid. Who can give? You give a sadaqah. The sadaqah is used for the masjid. So this masjid will stand for 5 years, 10 years, 20 years. Something might come. The county might come. Or they might move somewhere. Or just people might move. And the masjid is not there anymore. So this will also what now, Umar? This will stop. But look at knowledge. 